All right, we're back. Uh, we're on this little extra number page thing that is fun to know about uh, in design. So I'm going to go back to the file, open it up. Hopefully you are at a point that you've got your stuff all laid out. Oh, on top of it, it's nice to like look at this stuff and talk about uh, another component of the pages. So there's pages, right? So I'm highlighting all these pages, and you can see them all. But then there's masters. We kind of briefly might have talked about masters, but I haven't really gotten in too deep with it. So the idea about masters is that I could have made each one of these a different master, and if I wanted to use it, I could, instead of copying each template and copying and pasting, I would just drag the template name and see how they say A. They're all master A's right now. It's a little confusing. But I can, what I'm trying to say is I can add more masters. And you do that because you would have different templates you would be building for a book. This is a pretty simple book. You don't need so many temples. templates. But the nice thing about it is that we could add a couple of elements that would happen throughout the, the book that would make a, a nice design aesthetic, but also um, uh, good to have page numbers and how you don't have to go to each page to put in a page number. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to go to the actual page four and five. So I'm going to go a little larger scale. And I'm going to start um, designing on this page, but I'm going to delete it and then I'm going to put it on my masters. If I design something here, the nice thing about it is I know where it's going to be on the page, uh, and I can edit it once instead of having to go and see, did it work? Because if I just edit it on the master page, I can't see how it really works uh, with the title and the other pictures. All right, so I put a line here right below the information, and I'm going to copy it. So I can do edit, copy, and I'm going to go on my masters. So what I did actually... I didn't do copy, I did cut, which actually is much better. What cut does is it cuts it away, but it's still copying. So when I go to my masters, I can do file, paste in, I do paste in, it will still line it up exactly where I want it. And everything that has an A on it, that line will show up on now. So even this will show up on it. I don't need it on here, so I can use the none file and see how it's no longer A, and I no longer have that, that band that I put on in the master. This is hard to see that it's there because I have an image on top of it. You can see it here. Oh, we have it running into the image. We might want to cut that back. Oh, and we found another problem that it actually is needs to come down further. So I should have tested it on the page where there is more than one word. But that's an easy fix. About a quarter inch down, I'll just bring it down a little bit more. And I'll align it so that it's flush to the page and I don't have it running into my other image. So that'll solve those. Otherwise, I think it's looking great. So I'll go back to my master. I have to bring it down. So I can use the ruler to check to see how far down they go. And then I want to bring it over because it's going to affect other images. So going back to here, it still has the A's, but we don't see it. So let's just get rid of it. No A's on the covers. And then we can go back through here saying, oh, actually, I want this one all the way out. And the other ones not out. Um, or do I just leave it? You can make a decision on what you want to do. If I wanted to just have A all the way out, maybe this is where I do add a B in. And ones that have the line that goes all the way through can work. So since I know A master, by looking at my A masters, is working, I want to make sure that I use that guideline, that line, that is exactly in the right place. So I go to copy. I'm going to copy, not cut, because I'm still leaving it on A. Copy. I'm going to paste it on B. And you got to paste in for it to, to line up exactly where A is. 
and I'm going to pull it through so that my page four and five, if I now want to, I can drag B in and it has the line that goes across. So let's see if that worked. So this is blank because I had none. I used the none. I pulled this down to here for none. These have none because I pulled both of the panels down to here. You don't see letters on it. This is B that I pulled B to here. We could double click on it to see, ah, it did work. And the rest ones have A where it stops on the side. Oh, this one could actually be a B. So 10 and 11, I go up and I grab the B and I change it to the B. So that's the basics of what the master can do. You can, you can have two different elements and you can use it that it's exactly the same place for all your templates. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the number page. Number page is great. So I'm going to make A and B have a number because B is going to need numbers also. But the thing is, already looking at it, I know I have these full images on one side. So this side, I'm not going to put a number, but this side I will. So let's look at our grid. Okay, so I want to put a number here and not here. But maybe in B, I'll put it on both sides because I do have it available. All right, so let's get back to this number again. I'm going to do tab, I mean, sorry, the T tool, which is the type tool. I'm going to pull it out into the corner, and I'm going to do uh, one. I'm going to select that one, and I'm going to change it to anything I want. Maybe I'll make it Helvetica new, old, and I might want it really big. Once I've kind of designed it, designed it and put it where I want to put it, I'm going to go to, I believe, type, insert, mark, current page. You have to have the type selected, I believe. You can't be on the pointer to do this, because if you are just on the uh, selection, selection tool, it won't light up. So it has to know that you're talking about this uh, letter, number. So it goes to the symbols, I'm sorry, the marks, and then current page. It's saying it's going to take on the number of the current page. This changed to A because it is under Master A. And anything that has an A on it, on this side of the page, is going to have a number. So that's number 6, number 8. And I didn't have to do it. So B won't have anything because I don't have anything on B yet. It already numbers all your pages for you. And if I wanted to change the design of it, I just go back and change the position of it and it will be changed on all the A's. It's great. I only have to move one thing once and it's affecting multiple pages. I'll bring it back. So our problem would be is that B is going to be different. If we don't have anything in the B, then I need to uh, I need to also put it on B because we can't put B and A together on. So B, let's just add the, the B in here. And because it's already programmed to affect the page that exists, then it just already changes to B. And then this, I just want to do one more thing by selecting the type tool, selecting it, and aligning it to the other edge. And now we have type here for B, type here for A. And then let's see how this affects. This is blank, so I don't have any... Uh, any of the uh, masters affecting it. This is also blank. We don't have any masters affecting it. This has B because we have the bar going across and two numbers. This is A because we only have the bar halfway and one number. And so on, and so on, and so on. You can also look at that, make sure you're on the selection tool and not the type tool, and how it would look like that in print mode. 
So there you go. That's how you play around with the master pages, putting in a line that would work on multiple pages, and number pages that will uh, change according to, you can change the style in the master, but it will indicate what page it is on. All right, so that's a wrap on that little extra tip. And the next thing we're going to talk about is packaging.